5,220 pounds. This is the J Flight 298 bunkhouse by Jayco here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And what's funny is this is actually a reissue and, a, and an update of the old 30BH Jayco Eagle travel trailer from the days of yore. See, the thing is, what's funny is this is actually how a common no slide bunkhouse camper used to usually be shaped. Now it has single bunks instead of double bunks and it didn't have an outside kitchen like this does. Like I said, it's been updated. But what's funny is they were sitting down there and they said, you know, we like our 264 BH J flight, but sometimes we just wish it had a little more private uh, bedroom or sometimes we wish it had a better entertainment or an outside kitchen. And they saw this and went, wait a minute, we also can build this camper that does all the things the 264 BH does not. Now it's going to be a little bit heavier. It's a little bit longer. It's a little bit more expensive than the 264, but it's also that next, it's like, like it's an, it's entry level plus guys, where it gives you all the basics and then just a couple fun features more. Now, usually when I step inside a camper right away, I like to show you what something looks like with the slides closed in travel mode, as I call it. You don't really need to do that here though, since it's a no slide camper. But instead what you see is, you know, full travel access, the same as your campsite access all the time. And by rearranging this and lengthening it slightly as compared to the 264 BHJ flight that you'll also find here at Halid RV, it gives you more room inside to throw more cargo in transit while still being able to navigate the RV. For instance, you want to bring some bicycles in, you can absolutely park some bikes in here. I just recommend like doing something to kind of keep them sort of squished in place uh, or at least, you know, drape a blanket over them and lean them against something so they're not going to jiggle bang around in transit. That's a handy feature. But you've always got plenty of extra floor space in here. Now, we are no slide, so we are no carpet. There is zero carpet, nor are there any floor vents in the flooring of this camper. So as kids come and go with their dirty little feet, you know, they, they're not tracking dirt through the camper. And if they are, it's very easy just to, to broom it up, swiffer out, head on out, we're all high. Now, we've got all LED interior lights, but a neat thing here is how these uh, are also high intensity. There's also more of them because lights and windows are very expensive in the RV business. They're using more lights and more windows here, and the windows are tinted also. That's another sort of uh, check in the column for the J Flight series by Jayco here. But these uh, LED batteries, or pardon me, lights are a lot better on batteries when you're boondocking. They're going to sip your battery, not, uh, you know, gulp it as it were. Up here, your antenna. You really don't have to like crank it up and down. So a lot of old RV antennas, it was possible for it to, when you put it down to accidentally hang off the side of the camper, which tree branches love those antennas. They gobble them right up like Charlie Brown and the kite eating tree. But now it's just not an issue. You just, all you have to do is point it, scan for channels, you're good to go. Even here at their most basic level, J flights have uh, louvered and directional vents. What that means in simple plain layman's terms is that you can both uh, close and turn each individual air conditioning vent here. Now, one of the things I probably should have talked about right away because it's one of my personal favorite features on the J flight series is their interior height. This is three inches taller than the average bear, measuring six foot nine to the ceiling panel, uh, as opposed to six and a half feet. That means we have more space for bigger overhead cabinets, taller bunks. We also have more room in the shower, which is my personal favorite aspect of that extra interior height, because at my height, six two, six three, depending on how much I am or am not slouching, I can actually stand in the shower without my head necessarily needing to be in the bubble. And that's just, maybe it's not important to you, but that was one of those things that when I go camping, it's important to me because I don't like to duck in the mornings because I'm kind of grumpy before the sun starts shining. Now this right here is one of the areas where you can really see an obvious difference between the 298 and the 264 J flights. All this big uh, like triple section of cabinetry right here, this is present uh, here, but is not found in the 264. So you are getting some extra cabin space and cabinet space uh, in, you know, as, as part of that. Now we will refocus on the entertainment when we're pointing the other direction, but the sofa not being pointed perpendicular is one of the other very obvious variances between those two floor plans. Starting down here, you can see we still have plywood boxed uh, drawers and they are on full extension glides. And they are also still very well executing this kitchen. Really, the kitchen area in the dinette is nearly identical inside of here. You've got space for a handy wastebasket there. We have those pressed membrane countertops. So if you are splashing water around that sink, it's not inclined to... Uh, there's, there's just no area where water can penetrate into that. Now, that is a very low occurrence problem. 
But now it's essentially a no occurrence problem because they did put uh, a uh, you know better set of countertops in here. Now your air conditioner is centralized. And that's not like a very uncommon thing in campers, but in an entry level market like this, it actually can be. There are a lot of entry level campers where one of the things they've done to achieve a specific price point is use a non-centralized drop-in air conditioner. And considering your bedroom is kind of privatized, your bathroom is privatized, your bunks, once you pull the curtains, are not really getting airflow, a centralized air conditioner is extremely important. Now, being taller interior, we also have a taller pantry. Notice how we've got like a virtual six foot nine pantry here next to the refrigerator. Now, the fridge has uh, metallic inserts on the front of it, not like a, uh, a Luan printed uh, insert. And the reason I stress that is because now it's magnet friendly. And that's a small thing. But when you pull into a new campground, if you're trying out a new place, I don't know about you, I always go up to like the little clubhouse area whatever i'll grab some flyers some things to look at in the local area and i come back and i'll slap them on my refrigerator so we can kind of form tomorrow's game plan we like to plan one activity per day when my family goes camp and that way we still have plenty of time to just do nothing around the campsite and just spend some time playing yard games or just hanging out building memories as a family now we have plenty of sleeping between the queen bed up front and those dual double bunks in the back but if you pull that privacy shade right there, which is nice to keep a lot of light blocked out, very handy if it's hot, by the way, you also notice that you can fold down this dinette right here into a nice big sleeper. So you've got, you know, space here for four people, you know, whether it's four adults, adults, a couple kids, whatever, sit down, play some cards, or just that handy little bonus area. Maybe you're going to use it to sleep a big dog. Maybe you just need a flat surface in transit to carry some extra cargo. I don't know what your adventure is going to be like, but I know that this one's here to take care of you no matter what your idea of camping appears to be. Now, in addition to sleeping, you'll also find that you have some extra storage both above and below the dinette. And it starts up here. And one thing I've learned is you never have such a thing as too much storage in a camper. But what's nice is how this, it might be more of a basic camper, but it's basic only in amenities. It's built just like the Big Brother J Flights. Or really, the cabinetry is even uh, equivalent to that of the Eagles and North Points that you find at Jayco, the luxury fifth wheels. It's still a hardwood cabinet door frame with pocket screwed cabinet styles. If you don't know what that means, the uh, center beam right here, that's called the cabinet style. You can actually reach back there and you can feel how they're screwed together. It's not uh, particle board or beaver puke that's been stapled together. It's just something that's going to last longer. Now, uh, we talked about how the windows you can close with those nice uh, nightshades. But notice how the windows are also fully trimmed out. It's mostly an aesthetic thing that they're doing here. What's amazing to me is they're doing it even at their basic trailer level. But you also see how it gives the pleated shades right here something to actually bite into. Ever since Jayco started doing that, I've noticed that we don't have problems with pleated shades not staying up or down the way that they're supposed to. And of course, if you want to remove those cushions and whatnot, you can get under the dinette very easily to get to the storage there. This is also a nice way to get to see the power outlet that is right there below that table. That's very handy whether you just want to have a phone charger plugged in by the table. Some people like to have a little miniature coffee pot right by the table right there. But notice we've got additional um, outlets right here by this little entry stand. And that is very handy to be able to walk in or have your phone charging by the door. You hear your phone ring. You don't have to have it in your pocket. Maybe you're wearing clothes in the summertime that don't have pockets. This just makes life simple. And this is kind of like a... It's like a shoe garage plus right here. It gives you plenty of room for the extra shoes or you could put like a little shelf organizer in it. It's a nice blank canvas where you can find a whole bunch of different things to do and really kind of like, like so many other things that we've talked about with just the one dinette area here, really build your own adventure within the RV. Now this is a bunkhouse. I'd be remiss in my duties if we didn't spend a little time talking about looking at the bunks. And one of the first things I like to talk about on a G-Flight bunk or any Jayco bunk is that their mattresses are twice as thick as you normally find out there. I used to say 50% thicker, and it's not that uh, Jayco improved their mattresses, it's that everyone else's mostly got thinner. So these are about twice as thick, and if you feel them, it's actually a really nice, thick, uh, like, medium-duty foam. So, uh, a, you know, a younger, small kid can get on here, they're not going to, like, wear it out and have divots worn into it. And if the kids sleep better and they're in a better mood tomorrow, you'll be in a better mood tomorrow. And anybody who has a kid is going to know that's true. Because, man, I love my daughter, but oh, God help us. God help us if she did not sleep well the night before. Now, little detail things here, like the fact that you have individualized curtains for the top and lower bunk. 
Again, just gives you that extra ounce of little individual kiddo privacy and control. Very handy if maybe you've got a, a teen or a preteen in the mix there, and they're needing some privacy. You know, they need a little moment to sort of decompress and, and deal with their hormonal angst, and they can just sort of have their own little retreat. We still have a foot flush stool here, and this being a bunkhouse, we do have a handy little tub in the rear area in case you got like a little baby, you need to use the shower head as sort of a wand to hose them down. Now, they still have a full shower surround panel here. You really gotta watch some of these entry level brands. What they will do is they'll still put this piece of trim right here, but they will actually just switch from a tan Luan wallpaper uh, to a just stark white wallpaper on the Luan material itself to make you look like, uh, or make you think it has a shower surround. Now, if a camper doesn't have a shower surround, there's actually nothing wrong with it. It's just that there's one more thing you have to do, and that is you need to take your towel and you need to dry down the shower uh, panel walls and make sure you have that fan up there running next to that skylight to get some fresh airflow going. It's really not a big deal, but it's just one of those extra handy little things. Um, now, uh, over here in the little, uh, you know, split bathroom, a lot of people wonder, you know, like, why is the sink outside of the room? That's a common question I get. Somebody asked me that just this morning, actually. Well, it, it's kind of a 50-50 thing, as I like to call it, but the thing is, like, this is a bunkhouse. You could have a whole bunch of different kids going all at the same time in here. Well, having one kid using the potty or taking a shower or a bath while another one, you know, you can still wash your hands. You can still brush your teeth. You can still comb your hair. You're, you maintain more function for more time with a split bathroom like this as compared to a, uh, a common, uh, I don't know, call it fully self-enclosed bathroom like you might find in a, maybe a more couples-oriented fifth wheel. Flipping around the other direction here, this is where the 264 and the 298 very obviously differ from one another. So far, we've only talked about little areas. Now, they do still share that big dining door side window. What I like about this is it's right, uh, uh, like, I guess, under looking your awning, but look over looking your campsite so that, you know, you can be inside, you can run some air conditioning or whatever, or you could just, I don't know, maybe be cooking a meal or getting some stuff ready to take outside for family picnic time. And you can keep an eye on stuff. So when you hear one of those kids scream bloody murder, or you hear that, that you know, the one kid going, hey, well, you can look at it, you can assess the situation, you can decide, do I need to parent this conversation, or can I just let it go here? And you can do that all right from comfortably inside the camper. Now, the entertainment arrangement here on the 298 is really one of the signature calling cards of this model. Uh, a more private bedroom, better entertainment arrangement, and an outside kitchen are the three main variances here from the 264 that I've just mentioned a million times. And I'll probably mention more because they're very similar sisters to one another, you know? So the TV obviously can pivot out, as you see, um, so that, uh, you know, you have easy viewing from the kitchen, from the majority of the dining table, etc. Now, the TV is an optional piece of equipment here on the 298 J Flight SLX at Halid RV. The reason that we decided this would be a good floor plan to add that, because this is more of a basic camper, I think there are a lot of people who are looking to go camping, not RVing here, but you have this direct facing sofa entertainment arrangement right here. You're on Boardwalk and Park Place and you're like four feet from this big ol' HD TV right there. Well, it seems like this is a floor plan where maybe people might be more inclined to watch TV as compared to the 264 that I just mentioned once again. Now, there are different decors available. I should mention that. This is just an example of one 298 here at Halid RV. Maybe not exactly the 298 J Flight here at Halid RV. The other thing this does, though, is it opens up the opportunity with a longer sidewall for bigger windows. More light. Lighter feels brighter. Brighter feels bigger. Bigger feels better. And we've got more airflow, because look at that giant window directly across from a screen door. You know, you can latch the outdoor outside door back, keep that screen door open, really let some air buzz through here. We still have the handy shoe garage right by the door, so in a way, you've got that bonus cabinet by the entry door near the dinette. It could be shoes, but frankly, you've got a perfect little slot for them right there. And we have the handy little entertainment expansion shelf. You see that open pocket to the right below the TV. If you want to add anything, you know, Blu-ray, whatever, you've got a cool little spot for it, or you could make that a very handy little phone charger station. To the left of that, you see that little gray jumper cable? That's actually even a satellite prep, so if you did want to put a satellite thing on here, you could have a basic camper with high-class entertainment. And this right here is a very expandable entertainment center. In its current state, it's got a, a Bluetooth uplink, and it's a AM-FM stereo. That's fine. 
but it's also got an HDMI input and a face-mounted USB charging plug. So if you do want to do something high def or if you want to add like a little streaming stick, you absolutely can. Now up here in the bedroom, there's a couple things I want to point out that they're not doing differently from the living room. And that's what makes them exceptional because we still have pleated shades here in the bedroom. We still have the uh, fully trimmed windows here in the bedroom. And those are things that a lot of basic campers will tend to drop out. Uh, good LED lighting here in the bedroom, just like everything else. We also have an indoor-outdoor TV bracket here on our upper left, or your upper right as you're laying on the bed. So if you choose to add an additional screen to this RV, well, you can mount it on that bracket right there. When you're ready, you can easily dismount it, take it outside, and put it on a matching base on the exterior of the RV. Uh, wide open side stands, very, very CPAP friendly. But frankly, those household plugs would be very good if you want to add a phone charger, heated blanket module, a little bit of whatever works for you. Now, one of the first things I should talk about as we step outside is the fact that uh, this has twice the warranty of pretty much everything else in this class. And a lot of that is uh, due to the consistency that they have between the full Big Brother J Flight. It's very easy to look at this and people say, it's well, it's like a J Flight scaled down. I've always kind of looked at it the other way. I always felt that a, a J Flight is an SLX Plus. That's why I call this entry level plus. Because if you look at it, structurally, it's identical. To put it into more automotive terms that I think more people are familiar with, this is the more basic trim package. And then everything else is kind of just the jazzier, higher level appointment version from here. What's great is we still have the uh, 3 8 plywood roof decking in Jayco's Magnum Trust roof system. This thing has a roof rated for 4,800 pounds. It, isn't, it, it is not just walkable. That walkable is where this one begins. Uh, we've got uh, a 5 8 tongue groove plywood floor. And you also have the same sort of chassis arrangement here. If you look up front, you see how the tongue, the A-frame, is actually fully integrated into the chassis itself. Now, it's actually not any stronger, but what it allows this camper to do and be is it allows this camper to have a lower floor, not a taller roof. And that's how they achieve that three inch taller interior uh, ceiling uh, rating without necessarily making the, uh, the camper taller overall, which is a handy, handy feature. Now you'll also notice little detail things like we full have, or full have, still have, rather, a full outside hot and cold utility shower. Those are really handy if you're just cleaning a couple fish that maybe you just caught, um, or if you're hosing off the kids, or maybe you had a, you know, bike or something like that, or whatever the case may be. And notice it's also located next to your sewer station, so God forbid you need some little cleanup help there, you can. Uh, we have a uh, prep ready for a backup camera, whether you're looking for rear uh, motion only or in motion observation cameras. Uh, it does have a pre-prep for Furion mount. We can help you with either of those here at Halid RV. This also has the J Smart lighting package. It stands for signals, markers, and reverse travel. What that means in English is you see how there's those extra top clearance lights. Well, very much like a semi-tractor trailer. If you flip on your left turn signal on this camper, not just your tail light will blink, but the additional upper clearance lights and then all associated lights all the way down the side of the trailer, like that little marker light amidships in the middle of it there, it will blink with your turn signal so that other drivers on the road have a better, clearer understanding of your intentions on the road and the end result there is enhanced safety. Now inside those taillights, you see how there's like a white central aspect of that taillight. Those are reverse travel lights. When you shift into reverse, just like your car, you're going to have very bright white lights back here. So whether you're relying on a spotter to help you see into a campsite, or if you're using that in motion observation camera uh, to, to back into a campsite, should you choose to add one, you just get a better, clearer view of your surroundings because n nobody wins when you start playing bumper cars with campers. Now it's a little early, the sun's not really shining yet. Granted, this time of year here in the Midwest, the sun never really shines. It's not as bad as Alaska for six months of darkness, I suppose. Regardless, you can see how we've got a nice, bright, full-length LED light under that awning right there. Uh, what's also kind of cool here is with a white sidewall trailer, a white under awning on that canopy, it will light up pretty nicely out here. Now, you'll notice that right below that awning light, you've got kind of like virgin wall panels. There's not like speakers and stuff sticking out. There's not, you know, a lot of, I guess you call it punctures or cuts or holes or whatever in the wall that are then, you know, occupied uh, by fixtures and sealed. 
because they kind of place those in other locations. For instance, on the bottom of the awning arm right here, these are your awning speakers. And what I like about that is no matter if the awning is open or closed, it's always directing sound down toward your campsite, so you're not blowing away the neighbors. I think that's a nice little touch. Now, uh, Jayco came up with this low-profile telescoping outside kitchen a few years ago, and they have used it to just great effect all over the place. Now, what I'd like to point out here is, remember, this is more of that basic starter class camper, but this is kind of what I call like starter plus you know you've got that nice entertainment center that we saw inside you've got the double length warranty the plywood roof floor we've talked about uh we'll talk about some uh some best in class tires in just a second here but we've also got a real sink with a real drain that goes into a holding tank it's not the dog dish that you flip on the ground because a lot of campgrounds don't like it when you just flip stuff on the ground there's always seasonal lady next to you and she's like you're not supposed to put water on the ground and she's right you're really not supposed to anyway um <laughs> seasonal lady's not pleasant <laughs> We've also got Dad's medicine cabinet over here. So, uh, in total, you've got closer to eight cubic foot of fridge space. You've just got a little bit out here, a little bit inside, and this is really handy, as you know. I like to say for the bottled water and the barley pop. That keeps people from tracking dirt in and out of the camper all day long. Now, as we mentioned, best in class tires. We have Goodyear endurance radials here, American made, and these are rated for up to 87 mile an hour at 80 psi. Now, a lot of people don't understand the 80 psi part. Long story short. 80 PSI is more of like a residential rating. So like if you've got a little portable tank at home or if you stop at like a gas station with an air pump, you can do these tires. Um, when you start getting to that like 120 PSI range, well, then you have to go to like a uh, more of an industrial shop and use their heavy duty sort of air pumps. Now you can sort of see a little bit of the silvery background above those tires back there. These have a galvanized steel wheel well. God forbid this thing gives up the ghost and those radial belted tires start banging around up in there because you caught some debris on the road. Even if you do all the right things on your tires, nobody's immune to debris on the road. It's a shield just to help you get some time to bring this down from speed. Now this. This is actually something I don't get to show very much. You see that amber light kind of gleaming its way across those steps like a samurai sword in the movies? They've got a handy little step light under the uh, entry door right there so that you can see what you're doing in the evening. Now, the uh, windows here are uh, all UV tinted and that's very handy because it blocks a ton of that solar radiation, which means a lot less heat going on here. Plus extra privacy, plus it keeps the camper cooler, plus it keeps the furniture from fading. So there's like a lot of good things going on here. Now quick little tip from your Uncle Josh. You see how there's some plugs in the window right there, but there are not plugs in the bottom here. That's not an accident. Don't fill these he things here, guys. These are called weep holes. They're there for a reason. You plug those up and all you've done is trap uh, moisture in the camper. You could damage things. You could mold things. You know, if you're lucky, nothing will happen. But if you're unlucky, bad things will happen. Now, even here at their basic point, they have 30 inch wide baggage doors that are also extra tall. But notice it's a full, true pass-through, and even accessible from under the bed if you lift that bed up. So you've got more space in here for those nice zero-gravity chairs, for, uh, uh, I don't know, a little solar panel, because if you look at that blue sticker on the tongue, we do have a tongue-mounted solar panel. And then just the little things. These are just those little Jayco doing Jayco things. They are still including the little, um, you know, elbow saving foot pad right here. And the reason I call it that is because it's like six inches of extra jack crank length that you don't have to worry about anymore. Um, plus, what, what's nice is with that wider foot pad, if you have this thing parked like in the grass where uh, the heavy tongue on this could sink, it, it saves you a lot of really tricky like bottle jacking the nose out of the dirt if it does sink down and that's the kind of little detail stuff that's very easy to miss like if you just open a brochure they'll never tell you about the removable foot pad on that tongue but it is something that you will use and enjoy and appreciate every single time you go camping and that's just kind of what Jayco does they do those little detail things. This is a starter class, but it's not a cheap class. There's a very significant important difference between the two. Now there's plenty more to learn. That's why I encourage you to give our team here at Halid RV a call. Uh, you know, we only do everything, whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything between. But we don't do hidden dealer fees. Uh, we'll leave that to the big box stores. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.